Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. So I actually read this as a buddy read with Anthony Andrews, and I'll link to his channel below. I'm going to quickly read the blurb before we get into it. Uh, quick sort of disclaimer here as well, it has been a couple of weeks since I read this. Luckily I did tab it out as we went, so hopefully it's all going to come flooding back to me. None of us ever agreed on the exact beginning. Was it when we started drawing the chalk figures, or when they started to appear on their own? Was it the terrible accident? or when they found the first body. And then we've got praise here by The Guardian, Val McDermid, and uh, The Sunday Express. Lee Childs on the front there. He says, wonderfully creepy, like a cold blade on the back of your neck. And I think for me, that leads me into one of the kind of the problems I had with this was that I was expecting something more bordering on horror, you know? And certainly I was expecting something quite creepy when really it's just a, a f fairly generic thriller to be honest. I don't know. I was hoping I was hoping that it was going to have more of this creepy element and that, that was going to set it apart from just other books in the genre. And unfortunately, it didn't really have that. Another thing that kind of bugged me about it is that we jump from the past into the present or to the relative present. I think it was 2016 or 2017. 2016, yeah. So um which presumably was when this was published. The past part of it wasn't particularly interesting. And then it does tie back into the present, but it takes a long time for the two to kind of come together. It's one of those, you know, the vibes of an old friend group and how the passage of time affects them. They all have this shared secret, you know? And I just, the, the, it, didn't, it didn't work because I didn't really care about any of the characters. All of the characters in it just weren't fleshed out enough, you know? So I'm going to go through anyway and check out some of my, uh, the bits that I highlighted. Because there were little references and stuff that I did like as well. Like this one here, um, so this is about Fat Gav. Um, so Fat Gav said, I could lend you some money, but I haven't got much left. I was pretty sure this was a lie. Fat Gav always had more money than the rest of us. Just like he always had the best toys and the newest, shiniest bike. His dad owned one of the local pubs, The Bull, and his mum was an Avon lady. So uh, Avon ladies, we used to have one uh, in the Midlands where I grew up as well. They sort of sold from catalogues. They sold like household and beauty products. Uh, you know, other British people probably know of an Avon lady, um, but I guess they don't really happen anymore. I don't know. Maybe they do. I've not. I've, I've not heard of any of my friends talking about Avon ladies, but they're like, because this was from the bit that was set back in 1986, so it kind of makes a lot of sense that the Avon ladies are there, I suppose, you know? So back in 2016, and if you get annoyed by me jumping backwards and forwards through time for this review, I apologize, <laughs> it's like the way the book works. So we have here, the main character is chasing up, um, you know, one of his old friends, and he finds that uh, he has done pretty well for himself. He works for an advertising agency, the type that has unnecessary umlauts in its name and an aversion to capital letters. There were pictures of him with clients at product launches, clutching glasses of champagne, smiling the type of smile that ensures a dentist comfortable retirement. And that was basically kind of what my job used to be as well. My old company I used to work for was called FST, all in lowercase. We have this, uh, th this moment where the main character uh, gets asked to look after a cat and uh, he says, uh, uh, he says, oh no. And then his mum says, Ed, you're supposed to be an, an animal lover. I am. Mittens just happens to hate me. Nonsense. He's a cat. He doesn't hate anyone. He's not a cat. He's a furry sociopath. So there were lines that I enjoyed. We have a mention here, just a quick mention in passing to Lord of the Flies. Here in 2016, we have, um, I don't consider myself an alcoholic in the same way that I don't consider myself a hoarder. I am a man who enjoys a drink and who collects things. I don't drink every day and I do not usually turn up to school smelling of booze, although it has happened. Thankfully, it did not get back to our head, but it did warrant a friendly word from our fellow teacher. Ed, go home, have a shower and buy some mouthwash, and in the future stick to weekend benders. So this is the point, obviously, after the, we've gone back from the past where we start out into the future. Uh, um, where Ed, the main character, he is a teacher, he has a, a lodger, and there's something weird going on with his lodger. And it all gets explained. You have this line here. People are strange, as Jim Morrison might say. Good good tune there. Oh, and there's a mention of Frank Turner as well, who uh, I quite like. I quite like some of his songs. Uh, a mention of somebody reading the latest Harlan Corbin novel. I think that's how you pronounce it. C-O-B-E-N. -E I, I don't know how to pronounce it. But so, yeah, the problem that I had with it was more that I enjoyed a lot of the different popular culture references and um, there were some one-liners in it that I thought were quite entertaining. The actual plot itself was 
kind of convoluted and just not very interesting and didn't hold my attention. The characterization as well just wasn't good enough for me to really care about these kids as they go from kids in the you know 80s to to where they are in uh, 2016. And when the stories did tie in together with each other, I just wasn't invested enough to particularly care by that point i thought that the whole idea of these chalk figures was going to be a lot creepier than it was when it turns out it's just like that's just how the, the kids were communicating with each other really and so i don't know it wasn't terrible and it's got some pretty cool like ideas in it i just didn't much like the execution i guess so uh, i think when i reviewed it i gave it a 3.5 but thinking back to it i'm just going to give it a three out of five but i think you should also bear in mind that I wasn't expecting it to be as much of just a generic thriller as it was basically and I don't really like thrillers very much so I was expecting it almost to be not horror but edging towards horror you know especially with a blurb from Stephen King and this talk about it being creepy and whatnot and it's just um, you know I mean I, I would say as much as I didn't much enjoy reading Gone Girl, just go and read Gone Girl. Like, <laughs> so there are my quite rambly thoughts on The Chalkman by CJ Tudor. Again, I left it a little while before recording this review, so hopefully that hasn't ruined it too much. But um, I wanted to kind of record my thoughts quickly as I tabbed it out as well. And to say thank you to Anthony Andrews for the buddy read as well. Uh, yeah, if you've read this book, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.